son to never challenge or question white power again. Kyrie, this is not about a misunderstanding. This is about who do you think you are, Negro, to question our control of your community. We owned Michael Jordan. We owned every athlete y'all had. We owned every artist y'all had. We couldn't own Michael Jackson, so we killed him. We couldn't own Prince, so we killed him. We couldn't own Jimi Hendrix, so we killed him. What you want to be about, Kyrie? Don't you ever question us. We the chosen ones. Chosen by the devil to own Negroes. We the cho they say they the chosen people. Chosen by the devil to rule over black people who don't know themselves perpetually. That's what this is. Understand, overstand, understand. Understand, overstand, understand. So now they're going to make Kyrie do a Nick Cannon. They're going to make Kyrie do a Nick Cannon. They damn near made my brother Nick Cannon get a PhD in untouchable studies. Nick Cannon had to damn near get a PhD in untouchable studies before he could go back to wilding out. Shout out to Nick Cannon. Shout out to Nick. They made Nick get a PhD. They put Whoopi Goldberg in the timeout chair. They put Whoopi Goldberg in the timeout chair. They said, whoa, 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 whoa. You people never speak on our people. You people can never speak on our people. See, I want y'all to understand something. I want y'all to understand and understand and overstand something right now, brothers and sisters. This is an assault on the freedom of speech of unapologetically African alpha males. This is not about Kyrie or Kanye. This is not about Kyrie or Kanye. This is not about Kyrie or Kanye. This is about muzzling the mouth of the black male. This ain't about them. This is about us. This is about shutting the mouth of the black man once and for all. Marcus Garvey said, Marcus Messiah Garvey said, let me go back. Ma the black man, Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, who gave us the religion of Islam, the black man, Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, who gave us the religion of Islam. The black man, Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, who gave us the religion of Islam, said, The pen is mightier than the sword. Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, the father of Islam, said, The pen is mightier than the sword. The most honorable Marcus Garvey came along and said, the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey came along and he said, the pen is mightier than the sword, but the tongue is mightier than them both. Marcus Garvey said, the pen is mightier than the sword, but the tongue is mightier than them both. See, the tongue the tongue is a very powerful weapon, brothers and sisters. When used appropriately, it can wake up millions. Every revolution was born of the tongue. Won by the gun, but born of the tongue. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Every revolution was won by the gun, but it was born of the tongue. So you need the tongue and the gun to win the revolution. And so in order to keep the people under control, all black men who have a free tongue, all black men who are afraid to speak out must be publicly and socially castrated. Any black man who dares to use his tongue as a weapon of liberation must be publicly and socially castrated. That's what they're doing. To Kyrie. They're trying to do it to Kanye. 
They did it to Nick Cannon. They did it to so many other black men. They want to take away the freedom of speech. They want to take away the First Amendment rights of American African males. They want to crush the First Amendment rights of American African males. They want to destroy the First Amendment rights of American African males. They want to use Kyrie and Kanye as an example to the rest of us. Keep your mouth shut or we will destroy you. Keep your mouth shut and we will destroy you. So Kyrie said, I accept responsibility and I accept accountability and I'm going to donate a half million dollars to activism that protects your people from harm and hatred. Kyrie donated $500 thousand dollars Kyrie Irving gave the untouchables five hundred thousand dollars that money could have went to FDMG that money could have built a black school that money could have built a black bank that money could have built a black supermarket that money could have helped build a black hospital that money could have built a manufacturing center for African people that money could have built a distribution network Kyrie gave them $500,000. And you know what they said to Kyrie? Who do you think we are? Negroes? You can't buy us. Y'all the only people who can get bought. You're the only people who will sell your self-respect. You Negroes are the only people who will sell your racial integrity. You Negroes are the only people who will sell your people's honor. Who do you think we are? Us? You think we some Al Sharptons over here? You think we some Jesse Jacksons over here? You think we some Barack Obamas over here? You throw us a check and we forget what you said? Nah, player. Nah, player. Nah, player. The Untouchables laughed at that check. The Untouchables laughed at that 500000 check. They said, do you know how much money we make off your football players? Do you know how much money we make off your basketball players? Do you know how much money we make off your baseball players? Do you know how much money we make off of your actors? Do you know how much money we make off of your comedians? Do you know how much money we make off your civil rights struggle? You want to give us $500,000? You must not know who we are. We don't need your money because we print the damn money. We don't need your money. We print the damn money. We don't need your money, Kyrie. We print your money. They said, Kyrie, are you aware that uh, the Federal Reserve Bank, the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States government is a privately controlled bank, Kyrie? And I'm being sarcastic here, but this is what they're saying to Kyrie in their own way. The Federal Reserve Bank of this country is privately owned. It is a conglomerate of 13 private banks. And every one of those banks is owned by the untouchables. Let me say it again. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We will have to understand, overstand, and understand today. We will have to understand, overstand. Let me say this one more time. Kyrie Irving gave them a half million dollars. And they threw it back. You know why? Because they print the damn money. The Federal Reserve is 13 banks privately owned. It's a conglomerate of 13 banks. And the CEO of every one of the F Federal Reserve banks is a member of the untouchables. They print the damn money. What they need your money for? They print the damn money. What do they need your money for? They print the damn money. What do they need your money for? They print the money. What do they need a donation from you when they print the money, brothers and sisters? Was it not Father Rothschild who said? Was it not Father Rothschild who said? Was it not Father Rothschild who said, give me control over a nation's money? I care not 
who makes the laws. Give me control over a nation's money. I care not who makes the laws. Give me control over a nation's money. And I care not who makes the laws. You can't give them no money. They print the damn money. Now you know why you've never seen a homeless person who was a member of that community. You've never seen a homeless person in your life. You've never come across a homeless person in your life that was a member of that community. And this is why my reparations people, this is why you thirsty, fake, woke reparations activists, this is where y'all losing me. I keep telling y'all, take money off the reparations list. If you got to have a cash payout on your reparations list, put the cash payout at the bottom. If you got to have cash payout on your reparations list, put cash at the bottom. Don't put it at the top. Don't put a cash payout at the top of your reparations list. Now you know why. They print the money. So no matter what you get for reparations, it'll never compare to how much they still have. Do y'all understand me now? Do y'all understand me now? Do you understand me now? If I print the money, listen to me thirsty reparations activists, if I print the money, listen to me thirsty reparations activists, if I print the money, listen to me thirsty reparations activists, if I print the money and you say you owe us $50 trillion, okay? $50 trillion. Here's your $50 trillion, black people. And you can never bother the United States government for nothing else. Do you understand? You can never bother the government for no laws, no concessions, no police brutality, no jobs, no welfare. You're done with us. $50 trillion And sign this disclaimer that America owes you nothing else. You got your $50 trillion, But I print the money. So if I gave you 50 trillion and I print the money, all I got to do is put 25 trillion into circulation the next day. I'm going to cheapen the value of the money I just gave you. See, you reparations Negroes ain't got no vision. You reparations Negroes ain't got no vision. You reparation Negroes ain't got no vision. So the minute they give you the $50 trillion check, they're going to put 25 trillion in the economy the next day. To cheapen the value of the dollar. So what you thought was 50 trillion might be 10 trillion. In a few months, it might be 500 million. In about a year, it might be 100 million. What is wrong with you? Money cannot benefit you if they print the money. They print the money. They can make it no matter what they give you in reparations. They can print more of it and dump it into the economy and drop the value of your settlement. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. This is why you can't play the revolutionary Pan-African is cheap. You can't play the revolutionary Pan-African is cheap. And it bothers me. I'm going to come to Charles Barkley and Shannon Sharp in a minute. I'm going to come to Snow Bunny Charles and Snow Bunny Shannon in one minute. I ain't forgot about them. I'm going to come to Snow Bunny Charles and Snow Bunny Shannon in one minute. I'm, I ain't forgot about them. I got something to say about black men in the media. I got something to say to Stephen A. Smith, Richard Jefferson, Chris Boussard, Rob Parker, Mike Wilbon, Jason Williams. I got something to say about the Negroes in the media. I'm going to come to them in a minute. I'm going to come to them in a minute. I'm going to come to them in a minute, brothers and sisters. I'm going to come and deal with the Uncle Ruckuses of mass sports media. I'm going to come deal with the step and fetches of mass sports media in one minute. But hold on. But hold on. Let, let, oh, let, let, let me get this right. See, here's what I think we should do. And I want y'all to let me know what y'all think. I want y'all to let me know what you think. I think we need to have a sit down with the leadership of the untouchable community. 
Black America and untouchable America need to have a sit down face to face conversation. Who 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 with me on this? And we're going to lay out all charges against them as it relates to their exploitation and elimination. Exploitation of black America and elimination of certain leaders in black America. Y'all feeling me, brothers and sisters? We need to have a sit down with them because I'm trying to understand something. Three questions, and I got a million questions for the untouchable leadership. I got a million questions for the untouchables, but let me just hit you with a few questions I have for the untouchables. This is just a few questions that I have for the untouchables. Question number one. Abraham was an African. Abraham was an African. I believe he was born in Ur of Chaldea. He was an African. Moses, an African, educated in Kemet. They looked like me. Moses looked like me. Abraham looked like me. The 12 tribes, they looked like me. When did the seed of Abraham, when did the seed of Abraham, brothers and sisters, I'm not being disrespectful, I'm being honest. One of the questions I must ask the untouchable, if the seed of Abraham look like me, when did the seed of Abraham cease to be African and start being Neanderthal. I need an answer to this, brothers and sisters. I need an answer to this, brothers and sisters. When did the seed of Abraham cease being Africoid and became Caucasoid? When did the seed of Abraham cease being Africoid and became Caucasoid? When did the seed of Abraham Cease being Africoid and became Caucasoid. I need an answer. I'm not being disrespectful. I respect all groups, all peoples, but you got to tell me how this became that. Help me understand. Help me understand. And then I also got to ask you. Them slave ships that brought my ancestors over here. Them slave ships that brought my ancestors over here. Them slave ships that brought my ancestors over here. Who financed which banks? Which banks? Which banks financed the building of the slave ships? Which banks? Provided the insurance for my ancestors' human cargo. I got to ask the untouchables. Because y'all want the whole world to remember what happened to you. And I don't have a problem with that. What happened over there was wrong. It was wrong. I don't care the color. I don't care the culture. It was wrong. Death to innocent people is always wrong. Black, blue, purple, green, brown, orange. Death to innocent people is wrong. But my question to the untouchables. Did you or did you not invest in the slavery of my ancestors? Did you or did you not? Finance the slave ships. Did you or did you not provide the insurance for the lives of my ancestors? Is it not true that almost every bank you own in this country that was around back then participated in Mama Afa? Is it not true that the Secretary of War for the Confederacy? Is it not true that the Secretary of War for the Confederacy? Is it not true that the secretary of war for the Confederacy was an untouchable? And was he not a slave owner? And did he not promote? Wasn't there hundreds of slave owning untouchables? Are you trying to tell me y'all didn't own our ancestors? Because we got the proof, brothers and sisters. Y'all didn't own us? Oh, y'all had no part in owning us? Y'all didn't finance them slave ships? 
Y'all didn't insure the cargo? Oh, I thought not. Oh, oh, oh. You don't want to have that conversation. So not only do you own us now through athletics and entertainment, you owned us then. Not only are you exploiting us now through athletics and entertainment, you exploited us then. Not only do you control us now through athletics and entertainment, you controlled us then. How dare you? And you worrying about Kyrie's words? What are words compared to deeds? What are words compared to deeds? What are words compared to deeds? You want to destroy Kanye for words? He didn't offer to hurt nobody. He didn't wish harm against you. You want to destroy Ky Kyrie for words? He didn't wish harm against you. He didn't offer to hurt nobody. You want to destroy us for words, but what about your deeds? You want to stop us for words, but what about deeds? You want to shut us down for speaking our mind when you invested, profited, benefited from the enslavement of our people and you got the audacity. The audacity to make the world, the whole world, look at you like the eternal victims of the planet. When your history is just as rotten, as decadent, as inhumane, as ungodly as any other branch of the European family. I wish Kanye and Kyrie would have came together because if Kanye and Kyrie would have came together, I believe other athletes would have joined in. Other entertainers would have joined in. Kyrie and Kanye together would have been a magnet. Kyrie and Kanye together would have been a magnet that would have pulled other athletes and entertainers into this movement. And then Kanye and Kyrie with the athletes and entertainers and King Kong consciousness with the black consciousness movement in my grip. We would have brought the both sides together, black men entertainers and black men in the grassroots conscious struggle. And we would have united and we would have stood together. Kyrie. I know you got to go meet with the untouchable leaders in order to go back and play basketball. Kyrie, I know they want you to go meet with the untouchable leaders in order to go play basketball. They want you to humiliate yourself and they want to publicly castrate you and make you kiss the ring. But I want you, brother, to think about it. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You a grown man, but you got a chance to be great. You need to have a conversation with Kanye before you meet with the untouchables. Kyrie, do me one favor, Kyrie. Kyrie, do me one favor, Kyrie. Call up Kanye. I need you and Kanye to meet face to face. Don't do no telephone because both of y'all are under surveillance of the FBI. You are under surveillance of the FBI. You and Kanye are being watched by FBI, CIA, Homeland Security, CFR, trilaterals. Let's just keep it real. You talking about a billionaire and a multi-millionaire speaking truth to power. Y'all under surveillance. Y'all, you two, they paying more attention to y'all than they paying attention to me. Because y'all got the money to do what I'm trying to do. Kyrie and Kanye got the money to do what I'm trying to do. Kyrie and Kanye got the money to do what I'm trying to do. Kyrie, have a meeting with Kanye first. Before you go meet with the untouchables and sit in that damn chair, before you sit in that chair and get your marbles cut off, meet with Kanye. See if Kanye is serious or if he's just playing games. If Kanye is playing games, go ahead and meet with the untouchables. But if Kanye is willing to take this fight to the top, if Kanye says he's willing to take this fight to the top, then Kyrie, you might got to rock out with him. We talking about history, Kyrie. Ky Ky this is bigger than the NBA championship. Kevin Durant will get over it. Kevin Durant will get over it. And I'm a Kevin Durant fan, but Kevin Durant will get over it, my brother. We're talking about the salvation of 50 million here and 2 billion across the planet. You can initiate 
a revolution in political, social, intellectual, economic history and circumstance, Kyrie. You are on the brink of revolution, my brother. I want you to make sure you don't want to press on. It's okay if you don't press on. I'm not going to condemn you because you took a stand for me, my brother. So you and me is okay. Me and you is okay. I better not catch you with no snow bunnies. But me and you are okay, my brother. We good. But I'm saying meet with Kanye because if Kanye is serious about pushing forth a black agenda, I think it behooves you to stand with him. I think it behooves you to stand. Because Kanye posted your picture, my brother. Kanye posted your picture. I'm telling you, this, you two coming together, y'all can pick up where Malcolm and Martin left off, my brother. You and Kanye can pick up where Martin and Malcolm left off. You can pick up where Marcus and Elijah left off. You can pick up where Douglas and Delaney left off. You can pick up where George Jackson and Fred Hampton left off. And y'all got the money to do it. Let's get the black Wall Street popping Kyrie and Kanye. Come on, y'all. Somebody got to do this. If not you, who? If not here, where? If not now, then when? I want to say this. I want to say this. I want to say this. Charles Snow Bunny Barkley, Shaquille Snow Bunny O'Neal, Jalen Snow Bunny Rose, Mike Snow Bunny Wilbon, Richard Snow Bunny Jefferson, Stephen Snay Snow Bunny Smith, Jason Snow Bunny Williams. You, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You, ten Negroes. I want to call you the C word, but I can't use the C word on Instagram. Instagram told me I can't use the C word. So since I can't use the C word, I'm going to use the Negro P word. But you 10 Negroes are a disgrace to your race. You have done more to undermine Kyrie Irving. You 10 Negro Peans have done more to undermine Kyrie Irving than all the untouchable media in America. Charles Barkley, did I hear you say Kyrie should be suspended for what he said about the untouchables? You weak, fat, sloppy, unintelligent devil. And then I heard you say that your daughter is married to an untouchable. Your daughter is married to an untouchable. And so you took it personally, what Kanye said. This is what Charles Snow Bunny Barkley said. He took it personal. But did you take it personal when Breonna Taylor got shot up? Did you take it personal when Sandra Bland got choked out? Charles Snow Bunny Barkley, did you take it personal when Tamir Rice got shot up for a water gun? Did you take it personal when Freddie Gray or Eric Garner or Philando Castile or Alton Sterling did you, uh, Trayvon Martin, did, did, did you take any of that personal? I never heard you say nothing about them. I ain't heard Charles Barkley or Shaquille O'Neal say nothing in defense of Michael Brown. Y'all didn't say nothing in defense of Eric Garner. Y'all didn't say nothing in defense of Breonna Teller. Y'all didn't say nothing in defense of all these Africans who were murdered by the police. But you want to come to the defense of a community. That has never done a damn thing for black people. You are a disgrace. Shaquille O'Neal, you are the biggest, blackest thing in the United States of America. Shaquille O'Neal, you are the biggest, blackest thing in the United States of America. But you never cease to amaze me. Shaquille O'Neal, you never cease to amaze me. You always go out of your way to kiss the backside of your Neanderthal slave masters. I've never seen a black man as big and black as you. I've never seen a black man 
as big and black as you go out of his way. Go out of his way to prove his loyalty to his slave master. Chris Broussard, you are a disgrace. Rob Parker, you are a disgrace. Jason Williams, you was my favorite point guard in college. Jason Williams is my, fa my favorite NCAA Division I point guard of all time. But Jason Williams, I'm done with you now. Because I heard you say the other day that you're disappointed that Kyrie Irving didn't personally go meet with the untouchable community. You are, what is wrong?